Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Are you ready for today? Can we make demand for our daily bread? Join me in faith now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, there's supply coming to you from heaven. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Believe God. He can supply all your needs. He has the capacity and he is willing to do it. Jesus said, fear not, little children. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, that's why we're talking about the subject we're discussing this, this, this week, this month, and the knowledge of God. I, I find believers get entangled with, you know, these days there are lots of distractions, believe me, in the body of Christ. There are lots of distractions. Funny enough, it is social media that is fueling that distraction. So if you don't know God beyond social media, I feel sorry for you. And guess what? Why all this noise is taking place? The Lord will just show up. Trust me. So if you're out there taking camp, this is, this is me, I believe this person, I don't believe this person. I feel very sorry for you. In a good way, I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying, get out. Get, when I say I feel very sorry, it's to make you think and, and tell yourself, come on, what am I really doing? <laughs> it's good. Yes. Sometimes we have to say some things the way we say it to so make you wake up. Wake up and know the Lord for yourself. Don't know the Lord through preachers. Some of the preachers that are preaching, they are confused themselves. Sit down with them. And you know, sometimes I look at these things up. And I, I listen to him. You see someone so convinced talking about what he's talking. Like, I know this thing. And I already know the question I have in my head. I'll throw at him and then throw him off balance. Every of his teaching, throw him off balance. Because you look at this and you just smile and say, I've been there, I've done that. I've not, not preached like that. But I believe this thing you believe. And I got to the end of it. And I ran back to the Lord. I said, Lord, there's a problem here. And the Lord had to teach me and then you're like yay so all these things uh, i see i see so you're able to extract truth from the midst of all these things so don't join don't join certain controversies they are not for you and don't join people causing confusion don't join them let them be they are fulfilling their work they are fulfilling their ministry but don't let them influence you what is the Spirit of God telling you personally? What is the Lord saying to you? If you're not hearing the voice of God and you're following trends, you're following what this person is saying, and then you're busy waiting for who's going to say the next one so that you run with it, you will not hear God. And I've often told you, the day the Lord will come, it's not everybody that will hear his sound. Don't think there's going to be a sound like a trumpet. Pom, 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 pom. And everybody will be wondering where the sound is coming from and looking up. No, sir. There are people that will not hear the sound. Life will just be normal to them. In fact, when we begin to tell them that there is a sound, they're like, what are you talking about? Please give me a look. Yes. Only those that have ears to hear will hear the sound. Just the same way we hear his sounds today. Is this going to be no difference? If you don't hear the voice of God today, how would you hear that sound of his coming? But if you hear the voice of God today, it's so easy. The same way the sound is going to come. So if you live by his voice, that's what he said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Another way to put it is man shall live by the voice of God. That's how Adam and Eve were living in the garden. They live by the voice of God. The Bible said the voice of God comes walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The voice of God comes walking. The voice of God produces the word of God. So I say, well, no, don't say the word of the voice of God. Say the word of God. No, the vo I, I say, I use the term, the voice of God. For, for you, because if you hear me um, quote uh, Romans, say faith comment by hearing. And, and Romans said, Paul said, and hearing 
by the word of God, okay? But if you hear me quote that scripture, I'll say, faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Now, because I, I notice a lot of preachers have, have quoted that thing to me, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So they say, go and be reading your Bible, then the word of God will come to you. Uh, it's good, but people don't realize what it is to say the word of God will come to you. So they are reading and they're not saying, mm, I read something nice today. I'll take that as the word of God. No, that's not the word of God that has come to you. The word of God comes to you by the voice of God. So yes, why it's good to read the scripture, you are creating an atmosphere for the word of God to come to you. But make no mistake about it. The only medium by which the word of God comes to you is by his voice. No, 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 pastor. So your pastor can preach and then the word of God will come to you. You don't still get what I'm saying. The pastor is preaching something. That's what we call it most times. Something will just propel inside you. You hear something like something just said to me while pastor was preaching. Uh-huh. That's what I'm telling you about. The word of God is that something. The voice of God is that something. Most times when we talk about the voice of God, people say, my son. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No, sir. No. Elijah was waiting for the word of God to come. He saw the earthquake. He thought that was God coming, but God was not in the earthquake. He saw the wild wind. He thought that was God. You know, he saw all these things. And then at the end of the day, he said there was a still, small voice. That's the word, voice. So in the earthquake, he was waiting to hear the voice of God. He didn't show up in the earthquake. Maybe some other time he had shown up you know, in the earthquake. But that time he didn't show up in the earthquake. Until the still, what differentiated was. So in the whole thing, he was looking for that voice. And then that voice brought forth the word of God. So the same thing when he says, man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You can say, man shall live by the voice of God. The voice is not empty. The voice produces words. Praise God. So John speaking here, it says, no man has seen God in, you know, in, in, in John chapter 1 from where we stopped yesterday. And John was quoting Jesus. But we need to understand what Jesus said. Jesus said, no one has seen the Father. No one has seen the Father. Now, this takes us to the very beginning because um, uh, Jesus said, no one has seen the Father. Is that true? Yes, no one has seen the Father. No one will see the Father. No one can see the Father. But then understand that when he says no one has seen the Father, he's not saying no one has seen the entirety of God. No. Because when you study scriptures, even from the beginning, you will begin to know that the Godhead has personalities and they are distinct in their operations. Yes. The Father has a voice and he speaks. And what comes out from the voice of the Father is called the Word of God. Now, the Word of God operates. Kalumat said, Peter asking that. The word of God operates to produce what the Father has said. And then you also have the Holy Spirit. Now that's what we know him to be. That's what we call him. We call him Holy Spirit. Now when you go to Genesis chapter 1, I'll just browse through this quickly. Please don't stop where I stop. I invite to go do your study. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. Now it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now this is another place where you see the general word God is used. But actually, here, he, who, the one who is refer, he is referring to is the Father. In the beginning, the Father created the heavens and the earth. Okay, now watch this. 
Of course, the earth became, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the day. Then you see him say, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, verse 3 says, then God said, please follow me carefully. Then God said, and what did God say? Let there be light, or light be. And light was. Now, take note. God said, so words came out of God's mouth. I told you before, the one who speaks is the Father. Yes, the one who speaks is the Father. And when he speaks from his voice, proceeds the word of God. And the word of God is God. <laughs> God. And don't get confused, just calm down and follow me gently you will get it you're not dull you will get it and 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 tr i'm trusting the holy spirit to help you because what i'm teaching is not just for your head knowledge it's for you to become effective in working with the lord and you will see all that very soon thank you lord jesus says then god said now when you look at this genesis chapter one throughout he kept using the word, then God said, then God said, then God said. You can do that. Study yourself. We don't have time to go into each verse. Then God said, then God saw, then God said, then God saw, then God said, then God saw. Praise God. Then we get to chapter 2. Okay? Watch this now. Chapter 2 from verse 1. Thus, the heavens and the earth... And all the host of them were finished. Now, I, I don't know why the translators put this in chapter 2. I, I, to me, the Ishtab, and this should have you know, been in chapter 1. Because the, the, the verse 31 in chapter 1. Now, of course, translators, translators are not God. So they just feel, just the same way you're writing the story, you just feel you know, a new paragraph should start here. You know, this should go into the next page. Just like how you're arranging for reference purpose. That's, that's why it's done. It doesn't mean it was written. Please understand me. Now, like I said, if I'm the one translating this Bible, I would have put um, this verse and two other verses in chapter two in, in chapter one. Okay. See how chapter one ended. Then God saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. <laughs> So now you see, it could have said thus. Now what is thus? This is how, okay? Simple. This is how the heavens and the earth and the host of them were finished. Mm. How were they finished? God said. God was speaking. God was talking. The voice of God was coming. Praise God. And this is how they were finished now look at the next verse chapter 2 verse 2 it says and on the seventh day god take note please take notes because you say switch very soon and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has done now if you read the old king james you'll see he see and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which God has done. You know, when you read it, you'll be like, why is it God? Why is it this God? Now, let, let's go on. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now, to me, all this from verse 1 to verse 3 should have been in chapter 1. Yes, I said to me. Now that doesn't in any way say um, it's wrong. I'm saying in understanding it now, if you put this in verse 1, you will understand it better. Because now it's finished. How did, it, how did, how did the first the creation finish? It's finished by God resting, okay? When God finished everything he has done, it, it tells us this is how the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. How were they finished? They were finished by God speaking. 
And I told you, God here actually was talking about the Father. The Father. And the Father was speaking with his voice. And the word of God was proceeding from the mouth of the Father in creating everything. And in six days, he created everything he needed to create. But can I tell you something? In those six days, everything and everywhere was still dark and black. Darkness was still all over the place. Nothing physically moved. Hey, but, but, but what I said, in, in, so how did he create man? No, he said, on the third day, he said, no, 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 no. He was only speaking. The father was only speaking. No form, no shape, just the voice. That's all the father was doing throughout. Now look at verse 4, chapter 2. Follow me now. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Hold on. Hold on. He's introducing a new word to God here now. And what's that? The Lord God. Now, this is the first time you're seeing the word Lord introduced in scriptures. Go back and read the whole of Genesis chapter 1. Up till this point, you'll never see that phrase. Lord God, the Lord God, you'll never see it. And what, why is he saying, why is he introducing this new phrase now? That's to tell you that something has changed. Okay? Now, take note of that verse 4 again. Let's look at it. This is the history. Now, if you read the Old King James, the Old King James used the word generations. Hey, what's going on here? I'll tell you. The Father finished creating in six days. But in six days, nothing happened. No pain moved. No, Adam was not formed on the sixth day. Uh-uh, he wasn't. The trees did not grow. Animals were not formed. Nothing. Everywhere was still full of water and dark. When By the time God rested, the Father was the one who rested. He rested not because he was tired. He rested as in, I rest my case. Do you understand that? You know how you say, God, I, I rest. Meaning, I'm done with all my arguments and these are my submissions. I'm done. Meaning, judge, you can take a decision based on what I have said. now. These are all my evidences. These are all my whatever I'm submitted, I rest. And that's exactly how the father finished walking and rested. He rested because he had finished everything that he needed to do. He finished it and rested. Then now he comes here and said, this is the history. Not six days now. This is actually the beginning of the physical creation that we see today. Not in Genesis chapter 1. Please understand. Genesis 1, if you had gone to, if God had created you, for example, and taking you to the earth when he rested, you would have like, so what did you create? Yes, because you see nothing. Okay? But then he introduced a new word, a new phrase, a new personality here. He said, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day. Now, this day here is not talking about one day. No, he's talking about the, the, the period, the season. See, so the, the father rested on the seventh day, right? Then the, 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 let me just give it to you. The Holy Spirit is the one that is referred to as the Lord God. Hmm? Yeah, praise <laughs> God. It's the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to show you. Now, he began his walk the day the father rested. 
And what was he doing? Taking everything the Father has said and splitting it in details and forming them on the earth and in the heavens. He was forming them step by step. That's why it says history. Old King James, you can check it out. It says generations. So what you see today in the earth wasn't physically done in six days. As at when the Holy Ghost took over, after the Father rested, man was not formed yet. See? So everything was done by the Father by speaking. And when he rested, the one that is called the Lord God, and from this point, you begin to see the Lord God, the Lord God, the Lord God, the Lord God said, the Lord God did, the Lord God this, the Lord. It is the Lord God that formed man. It is the Lord God that caused the earth to be how it is. It is the Lord God that put all the, the, the plants and all that. It's the Lord God that did all that. And guess what? The Lord God is still working till today. So now you see a different personality of the Father who no man has ever seen. No one has ever seen him. No one has ever felt him. The only thing the father does is to speak. Then you see the son, the, the sorry, the word, the, the, the Holy Spirit, who is also called God. You see it here, the Lord God. We call him the Holy Spirit now. See. But then he got into action when the father rested. And he's the one that began to take things one after the other and forming and creating them. And my time is always gone. We'll continue tomorrow. I hope, I hope you're learning from this. That's the purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.